In this video, we're going to expand the definitions of the trig functions, that is sine, cosine, and tangent, to apply to every angle. Why every angle? Well, before you know how to do this, you only know um, the idea that you can find the cosine of an angle between 0 and 90 degrees. For example, you have a triangle and you have an angle, and because it's a right triangle, um, it's definitely going to be an angle between 0 and 90 degrees. And if you have the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse, um, you know the definitions that the sine of theta is going to be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. But what if we want to make up a definition that allows us to find the sine of something like 122 degrees, or 279 degrees, a number, an angle that's bigger than uh, 90 degrees? Well, this is how we do it. Basically, we start with a coordinate plane, and we draw a unit circle. A unit circle is a circle where the radius is 1. So every point on the circle is a distance of 1 away from the center. And suppose we had an angle, and the, the bottom of the angle uh, will rest on the x-axis, and um, the other one will just extend as far as it extends. And we call this, again, angle theta. And um, so this is going to motivate our definition of what the sign of this uh, angle is. For Every extension of that line, we can draw lines to make it a triangle. And uh, we can call that opposite side the opposite, O, and the adjacent side the adjacent. And let's find out what the sine and cosine is of this particular angle. Um, and again, the hypotenuse is equal to 1 because this is the unit circle. At any rate, sine of that angle is going to be equal to the opposite over 1, because 1 is the hypotenuse, or equal to just the opposite, O. And cosine of that angle is going to be equal to a divided by 1, or adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is equal to a. So, in other words, we could rewrite these sides as cosine theta and sine theta. Um, why are we doing all this? Well, the most important thing when discussing the unit circle is discussing this point. The point where the extended line meets the unit circle. And at that point, we know that, in this case, um, it's going to be cosine theta sine theta. The coordinates of that point will extend in the x direction cosine theta and will extend up sine theta. So make sure you understand this point. This motivates our definition for what cosine of theta and sine theta is. No matter where we extend the line, no matter where the uh, angle extends to, the point will be cosine theta sine theta. So here's the definition. Cosine theta is the x value of the point on the unit circle formed by angle theta. And sine theta is the y value of the point on the unit circle formed by angle theta. In order for this to make sense, we have to look at this in the other situations, the situations where it's not just a small angle like this. So look at the first example. That's what we just did already. We have the the bottom side is cosine, the height is sine theta, and so we have cosine theta sine theta. Now in quadrant two, look at the point where the extended line, the line created by the angle theta, uh, extends to, and that is also going to be cosine theta sine theta. That means um, that we find the cosine and the sine of that angle and use it to determine how much to the left the point is and how much up the point is. And we use that triangle to find out what cosine theta and sine theta is. But in this case, cosine is negative because the x value of that point, the point um, cosine theta sine theta, that x value is going to be negative. In quadrant 3, in this example over here, uh, if you extend the angle all the way, then you'll find that both cosine theta and sine theta are negative. Um, and that's because that point, cosine theta sine theta, exists in a negative x value and a negative y value. And for quadrant 4, when we extend the angle all the way back and then create the line, uh, the point on the unit circle is going to again be cosine theta sine theta, but in that case sine is negative because the y value at that point is negative. So what's the main idea? The point is always going to be cosine theta sine theta, no matter where on the unit circle it is. Um, and we can find out what that point is by using these smaller triangles uh, that are created. But after we find out what these triangles are all about, 
then we have to make sure that the sine and cosine are negative depending on where in the unit circle it is. So this can only become clear to you after seeing a lot of examples, and I'll save that for a later video, but this is the conceptual origin of how we define um, the cosine and sine of angles greater than theta, or I mean angles greater than 90. Um, at any point on the unit circle, the point is going to be the cosine of the theta and sine of theta, and then we just have to find out what it is.